It's snowing! Uh, hello and welcome to Suck It Santa, the show that picks apart everything you've grown to hate about the festive season and our mission to leave you questioning the true meaning of Christmas. We're going to be peeling away the festive fakery, tearing down the decorations and vandalising your Christmas trees all with a little bit of help from our good friend Scrooge. Yes, if you found, ever found yourself cringing at the Christmas number one, dropping off during the Queen's speech, or throwing up at the sight of those repulsive Christmas adverts, then this really is the show for you. Welcome to Suck It Santa! Oi, Suck It Santa! Welcome to Suck It Santa, a show where we'll be asking questions like... Have we simply swapped religion for retail in our endless search for winter happiness? Or is there a deeper meaning to our festive frolics? To help us understand what it's all about, we're going to be having a debate with some charity workers. Interrogating a Hamleys employee and ripping those cringeworthy Christmas adverts to shreds. And if that doesn't leave you packing away the plastic tree for good, we'll also be looking at some of the nasty injuries people have sustained from Christmas antics. And we'll be hearing from Hannah Piranha, our in-house Suck It Santa Band. Oh, that was, that was lovely. Uh, but first up, we sent our good friend Scrooge to the North Pole and back to find out what the old grey man really gets up to in his workshop. It's time for the North Pole News. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the North Pole News. Our top story tonight, is Santa a slave lord? According to recent figures, it's estimated that St Nick employs 29,000 elves. On a UK minimum wage, it must cost him around £183,000 to pay his staff each hour. We contacted Santa, but he refused to explain how he affords to pay such a big workforce. Which brings us to our next story. Could Santa be the destroyer of our world? Santa's workshop is thought to produce over 60,000 kilowatts per hour, and that's even not even considering his gas and water usages. And we still wonder why the North Pole is melting. So I ask you, is St Nick really such a good guy after all? Tweet in with your thoughts at hashtag SuckItSanta. Well, I'm sure that'll leave everyone at home thinking about something where they open their presents this year. In the meantime, we have a special guest with us today, a man who endures screaming kids, stressful parents, and all throughout the festive period. Before we meet him, let's get an idea of how crazy his average day gets. Here with us is Otis, an employee from Hamley's Toy Store on Regent Street. You're right, Otis. Oh, Cheers for joining us. Uh, so what's it like working in such a busy shop over uh, Christmas? It's pretty manic. It's like World War Three. Kids screaming, <laughs> parents flinging them out of the way. It's mad. Wow, parents flinging kids. Uh, now, you've you've brought a couple of like little little toys to give us a taste. Take us through it. I have. I've got um, three of my top favourites. We've got the hang gliders, which just... Wow! Float around like that. It would help if I didn't drop it. That flies better than Ryanair. Look at that. That is awesome, right? So take us that. That's one. And then we have my favourite circus toy, which is the Diablo. Oh. It place it along ground. Amazing trip magnet. You just prick it up like that. Get it really going. Then you yeah. start going. Wow! Ooh, Look at that. Cool. That was that was definitely it something. It's a bit time to practice. Yeah. Go. But my favourite by far. I've got a problem getting it up too. <laughs> Look, cannon, which shoots out to about thirty feet, so I can get my oh, those lovely exists. One, oh, two. There. Shot her right in the face. Well, right in the face indeed. It's a physics toy, so. It's Is she involved as well? Oh, she does come with the package. Comes with package, batteries included. Um, now, obviously, you see a lot of people uh, like kind of uh, on Christmas. How much is the average spend for your Christmas person? Um, family of three, we'll say about sixty pound for each of them. So that's one hundred and eighty pound. Yeah. One hundred and eighty pound. Would you say that it is more about spending money or spending time with the family at Christmas? I'll say more about spending money. People forget the value. It's just about getting the biggest and best presents out. Wow. Okay. That's a bleak message there. Well, thanks for coming in today, Otis. Speaking of money, we're going to be finding out how spending at Christmas affects some very vulnerable people. 
Hey guys, I'm Isabel and today I'm fundraising for the ever important cause Student Santa here at the University of Westminster in Harrow. However, what people don't know is that this is actually a fake charity. I'm going undercover and asking students to donate their hard-earned pennies to other less financially responsible students. Let's see just how generous people can be during the season of giving. Hi guys, do you um, want to donate no. to Student Santa? Do you um, want to donate for Student Santa? It's a charity for Chris Christmas. So you've got enough money for a coffee but not for charity? Oh, a penny. Great, thank you. Thanks, have a nice day. Cheapskates. So after a gruelling five hours of weird looks and insults, I earned myself a whopping five pounds and fifty-one p. Looks like no one's really got any Christmas spirit around here, but whatever. I'm off to go buy myself a meal deal with all these well-earned pennies. Thanks, Isabel. It looks like people aren't as giving as we thought. Uh, well, here with us today, we have two pairs of students in to voice their opinions on generosity at Christmas. Now, to my right, we have two students who believe charities are incredibly important at Christmas, calling themselves, it's not all about receiving. Uh, I had a girlfriend called that one. And on my left are two students who feel that Christmas time is time to think solely about the family and their name is Charity Starts at Home. God bless you guys for coming in. Thank you very much. So let's crack on with our first question. What do you think is important at Christmas time? Do you think it's important to give to charity? I'm going to direct that to giving is better than receiving. Yeah, I think it definitely is because um, a lot of charities are sort of based around the fact that people can't actually work so for other people to be able to give them money so that they can afford things like fridges to keep their food cold or just presents to give to their family, I think, I think that's really important. Especially in, in the economic downfall, it's kind of people have less generally, so it's always nice to give what other people don't have that you have. So because we've got less, then we should be giving more, surely, guys? Well, I suppose, but if you don't have the, the time or the money to give, then surely you should look after your own first. Otherwise, you're going to become the sort of person that needs to be looked after by charities. Yeah, come a case yourself. So would you say it's better to look at sorting yourself out first before you look at other people? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay, very, very balanced argument. Any answers from that? It's not just about giving your money. You can give your time as well. So you don't necessarily have to give kind of your own money out of your back pocket. You can give your time, which is free. And, and everyone's got a little bit of time to give and yeah. benefits are being cut and everything. Good so. point. So if we are talking about giving time, talking more economically, more corporally, how much on average do you guys spend on Christmas each year? I'm going to give you a little bit of time to think. I'm going to direct that first to Charity Starts at Home. How much on average? Like £50? Pounds, yeah, maybe. about £50. 50 pounds. quid? Yeah. 50 quid, excellent. Don't love your family that much. <laughs> and, and on this side, do they spend 50 quid? How much do you guys? I'd say 100. Yeah, around 100. A hundred. Wow. Okay. So that's, we've got a kind of a quantity there. Do you think that Christmas is all about the commercialization? I'm going to direct that back to you guys. I don't think so. I think it's, um, especially with sort of more distractions now, I think it's really important to have at least two days where everyone knows you sit down, you're with your family or your friends, whoever, and you just have a really nice time and you can give people, you know, things that they've always wanted, like throughout the year, things like that. It's just you and your family and it's really important and a lot of people don't get the chance to have Very that. good point. If you just sit down, you could sit down just for two days with your family, mm -hmm. but you're saying the entire Christmas period should just be about families, not about anyone else. Well, I think so because um, I don't know about you, but families often, they work all year and you don't get yeah. to see them, mm. especially if you have family that lives abroad or something. But it's quite nice to be able to spend as much time as possible. Yeah, it's quite a special season, really. Very special mm. season. Would you? What do you say to that? If they say it's a very special season to spend time with family, you're spending it with people in soup kitchens, which is lovely. Like I, I love soup, but <laughs> it's it, surely, surely, it's a one time a year we should look after our families. Other people are just important, though. Like yeah. we do get to spend time with with family throughout the rest of the year, with other seasons and stuff. So. I think to be able to look after other people as well, it's important, isn't it? Yeah, and plus we, we're with our families 365 days of the year. So two days wow. out of the year, <laughs> you can kind of, or like we see them all the way through the year. And Much more days, than we see other people who need help, exactly, basically. Exactly, two days just to give your time up is, is nothing compared to what they don't have that we do. Okay, so you should, you should look outwards 
we should be looking inwards. To sum up your, your arguments and give you two seconds, what would you say? Spread the, spread the love. Spread, spread the, the love. <laughs> Just keep yeah. it for yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep it there. Well, I'm afraid that is all we've got time for. But thanks to both of our teams for playing part. You are absolute superstars. Now it's time for us to look what makes Christmas so dangerous. So four. Health and safety is always overlooked at Christmas. Last year, we saw four people in the hospital from pulling crackers, over 350 people from fairy light injuries, 50 people cut off limbs while cutting their turkey, 12 people gassed themselves when cooking it, 27 people died from testing batteries on their tongue, one in three Christmas tree fires caused by electrical faults, and one in 40 end up dead. So this is a reminder to all you clumsy people out there, be careful, and if in doubt, dial Kyle. Have you been injured this holiday season? Ow! Was it Christmas's fault? You'd better dial Kyle. Have you fallen whilst climbing the Christmas tree? Or perhaps you cut yourself while carving the turkey? Or perhaps you just got a little cold this winter? Well, you're not to blame. Oh no. Christmas owes you money. 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 And that's why I fight for you. So you had better dial Kyle. Welcome back. I've just been looking through some of your tweets and it turns out we're not the only ones that think Christmas has lost its meaning. Uh, looking down here at our lovely little iPad, we've got hashtag JJ Walsh. She says, I can't stand all the Christmas charities that are trying to get my money. Who should really get my money? Hashtag suck it Santa. Uh, and then we've got uh, at the lucky Lewis says, uh, these greedy kids need a slap. Nice. Uh, hashtag uh, at flying heffalumps. Instead of milk and cookies, leave him a salad and a note explaining that you think you could stand to lose a couple of pounds. Uh, that's also hashtag suck it Santa. Thank you very much for that. And finally, at Nathan V, getting so fed up with all these Christmas adverts, they don't even make sense. Hashtag suck it Santa. Now I feel exactly the same. I can't stand those Christmas adverts, right? And it turns out Scrooge don't think much of them either. So this next part of the show gives us a chance to like let off some steam and give those advertisers a piece of his mind. It's time for his advert critique. It's that time of year again and our television screens have been plagued with false festivity. Yes, the mind-controlling, vomit-inducing Christmas adverts have made a return with an extra helping of cheese to help bring up your dinner. This year is no exception, and John Lewis are back with their annual sob fest, pulling out all the stops to make possibly the saddest piece of telly since Lady Diana's funeral. This ad follows the life of what looks like a clinically depressed bear who has an unexplained issue with timekeeping, and it isn't until the bear's lover buys him an alarm clock when he can finally go and enjoy Christmas like a normal person. Bear. If that isn't tear-jerking enough, Lily Allen adds insult to injury with a truly awful rendition of Keane's Somewhere Only We Know, where her trademark boring vocals are enough to put anyone off music for life. At least John Lewis made an effort. It's more than can be said for Mr Jay Sainsbury's entry for boring advert of the year. Their budget must have been non-existent this year because all they seem to have done is steal from people's ghastly home videos and stick them together to make three and a half minutes of utter crap. Seriously, this advert makes watching paint dry an exciting prospect. Deck the halls with buffs of holly, fa la 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 Is the season to be jolly, fa la 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 Brought to you by Sainsbury's. What does that even mean? You're saying that Sainsbury's has resorted to selling us people to make Christmas special. I've seen some sickening advert campaigns in my time, but slave labour is where I draw the line. Saying that, the new Morrison's advert looks something out of my worst nightmare. A hideous reality where I'm sat down to dinner with Ant and Deck and a gingerbread man whips out his giant colourful stick and starts singing Be Our Guest. Come to think of it, that sounds like a video I once watched. Sadly, that brings us to the end of this year's Suck It Santa. The turkey was burnt and we had far too much to drink. But I think we finally found the true meaning of Christmas. 
Thanks to all of you that tweeted in. And of course, thank you so much to all of our guests. Now, to sing us out, it's the, for one last time, it's Hannah Purana with their original anti-Christmas song. You better not shout, you better not cry, you better watch out, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming. Just want the Christmas money stole